Hi, it's Melissa Mortensen from polkadotchair.com and today I'm going to walk you through the steps to make a very simple zippered pouch. Some of you may have seen the tutorial that I shared a few months ago for these um, Hogwarts inspired, Hogwarts house inspired zip pouches. Um, I taught you how to create the kind of stripy tie pattern on the front and I did not finish by showing you how to um, create the actual zippered pouch. So today I'm gonna to show you how to finish the actual zippered pouch. So in the video, you will notice that I am using um, some of the patterns that I created for the Hogwarts zip pouches. But you don't have to use the same fabric to create the zip pouch. And you don't even have to use the same size of fabric. The technique I'm gonna show you today teaches you how to make a zip pouch in any size that you want with any fabric that you want. These do have rounded corners. I can, I'll link up to the tutorial on my site if you are interested in making these. But I have made so many zip bags over the years. They make great gifts. They're so easy to stitch up. And I think that once you kind of get the technique down that you will start seeing that there are so many different fun ways to customize this technique. Um, I mentioned in the video that it doesn't matter what size your um, fabric pieces are as long as they're a rectangle and as long as your zipper is proportional to the size of the rectangle. So if you have a small zipper, you can make a smaller pouch. If you have a larger zipper, you can make a larger pouch. Um, these pouches and the one in the video all feature metal zippers, so you do need to be careful not to sew over the metal zipper and also be very careful because as you press, metal zippers get really hot. Um, you can also do this with a polyester zipper. I will link up on my blog a project that has a polyester zipper. This technique might seem a little bit counterintuitive at first, but I promise once you do it once and realize how simple it is that you are going to be making simple zip pouches all the time. Let's walk you through the basic steps to make a very simple zip pouch. The zip pouch I'm making today um, is based on this one, which are my Harry Potter house inspired zip pouches. Um, the technique is gonna be the same no matter what fabric you use. Um, so don't be thrown off by the fabrics I'm using. If you wanna do something completely different, you totally can. And I will go ahead and walk you through the steps of adding this little attachment if you wanna add a lanyard or a clip or just a fun key ring or anything like that. First, let's talk about the pieces that you need. You're going to need two pieces of fabric for the front and two pieces for the lining. So um, I, when I say front, what I mean is the outside of the bag. There is a front and a back. Um, so for the front of the outside of the bag, I've, I'm using my striped fabric that I pieced. If you'd like to know how to create a stripe on your own, I have another video for that that I'll go ahead and link up here for you. And then I have another piece of fabric for the back of the pouch on the outside. And all of my pieces of fabric are the same size, which is 8.5 by 11. And then I have two pieces of fabric for the lining. On the lining of the zip pouch, I have attached a piece of fusible fleece to both sides. Um, just follow the directions on the package of the fusible fleece. And then for the pouch outside, I have attached a piece of Shape Flex interfacing. Um, some of you may be wondering why my interfacing doesn't go all the way to the edges. That's because my interfacing is 20 inches wide and this piece is 11 inches wide and I just didn't want to waste interfacing. So I went ahead and just cut my interfacing to 10 inches. It will be totally fine. It's not gonna make any difference on the outside of the bag. I was just being economical. Um, you could also piece a couple of pieces together but do whatever makes you comfortable. Then you're also going to need a zipper. For this project, I am using a metal zipper. Um, there are a few things to note when you're working with a metal zipper that are a little different than working with a polyester zipper, and I'll go through those as um, the video goes on. I'm going to go ahead and show you the very first step, which is going to be pinning the zipper to the front of the pouch. Let's pin this pouch together. Um, the, I'm going to start with my bag outside front pieces and one of my lining pieces. I'm going to take my zipper. There's a right side and a wrong side to the zipper, just like there's a right side and a wrong side to fabric. And deciding on which way I want the stripes to run on the pouch, I think I want to go ahead and have them run this direction. You're going to pin the zipper so that the right side of the zipper 
is facing the right side of the zip bag. And I'll show you in a second what to do about that little metal piece right there. Now, it's up to you if you want to baste to this. I don't think it's necessary. What I like to do next is then take my lining and I pin the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper so that the fabric pieces are right side facing. And it's up to you if you want to move your existing pins or use a new set of pins. I'm gonna go ahead and just add more pins. That is ready to sew. You're gonna take it to your machine and you're gonna sew with, um, everyone always asks me about seam allowance on zippers, but it's the width of the zipper foot, which is usually like a, um, a quarter inch or um, one click even bigger than a quarter inch seam allowance. And when you sew, have the lighter fabric, which in my case is the outside of the bag, down towards the feed dogs and have this heavier fabric up. And what, as you sew, what will happen is the feed dogs on your sewing machine will help feed that lighter fabric through so that you don't get any puckers. So I'm just gonna sew from here over to here. I'm gonna walk you through the setup of the machine. I have a zipper foot on my machine. I have a Brinina 770. Um, I have the dual feed foot engaged. If you don't have one of those, don't worry about it. It's machine specific. And I have my stitch length set at 2.6. And I'm going to take my machine and I'm gonna move my needle to the, I always get mixed up. I'm gonna move my needle to the right. I usually do, actually not to the right, to the left, see? This is why I always forget every time I have to do it, I have to look at it. So I'm gonna move it to the left, three clicks. So one thing to note is in here, I have got this zipper pull thing, which will stress me out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unpin these two pins, then I'm gonna come under here and unzip my zipper, maybe just a couple inches. So everything is still in the same spot, but I can kind of feel where that zipper is now. I'm gonna start at the edge and just go ahead and stitch this seam. I can feel right here where that zipper is. I'm gonna go ahead and lift my presser foot. And then, sorry if the camera's blocking, the fabric's blocking the camera a little bit. Then I'm gonna zip that. So now my zipper pull is up here and I'm past it and I don't need to worry about the machine running over it again. Now that that seam is sewn, you can see the zipper kind of just sticking right in there. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side of the zipper. I'm just finger press this out of the way so it doesn't get caught. We'll press it properly in the next step. You just don't want it to get caught. And then you're gonna do the same thing again. So the right side of the bag outside on the right side of the zipper. And then I'm going to pin the lining the right side of the lining to the wrong side of the zipper. So I've got a little sandwich here, just like on the other side. The only difference is I've got something sewn to the other side of the zipper. Go ahead and pin that and sew it the same way you sewed the other side of the zipper. The other side is now sewn, so you have this kind of butterfly looking piece like this. You're gonna take it to your iron and especially on the lining because you've got this thicker fleece on the lining and you're gonna press it really well. And then on your sewing machine, also using your zipper foot, you're gonna go ahead and stitch down, top stitch down both sides of the zipper. And then we are ready to assemble the pouch and I will go ahead and show you how to make the keychain attachment. I've top stitched along both sides of the zipper Hopefully if I hold that there long enough, it will focus for you so you can kind of see how that works. We're ready to go ahead and make the lanyard attachment. For this, you're gonna need about a two inch by about five or six inch long piece of fabric. You're gonna fold it in half, right sides facing. 
just like that. And you're gonna take it to your mis machine and you're gonna sew it with less than a quarter inch seam. So I'm gonna say a scant quarter inch seam all the way along around the long side of the fabric and then you wanna go ahead and turn it right side out. I wanna show you my trick for turning these right side out. This um, is a turner. I don't know what they call it exactly. It's a hemostat if you are in medicine, but you can buy these at a lot of craft supply stores. I will go ahead and link mine. And you're gonna unclick it and then just kind of mush the end there. And then I'm gonna snap that so that it holds tight and my fabric is on it. And then it just turns right side out. It's so easy. Before I had this, I hated turning little things right side out. So just get that all the way turned right side out. Take it to your iron and press it and then top stitch around a uh, top stitch on both sides of the edge. I like to leave the seam allowance or the seam in the center, not on the edge. I think it looks a little nicer when it's finished. The piece is top stitched. I have a one inch D ring. Um, I It's gold, I got it at the craft store. I kinda wish I had a bronze one, but I don't. So we're just kinda going with what you got. You're just gonna feed this through here. You can add these on after because most of them have a seam. I'm just gonna tell you it's hard. I think it's easier just to go ahead and put it on before. Feed it through. And I like to kinda leave like that much space on the outside. This is cut longer on purpose. So I'm gonna say about an inch and you're gonna pin it. You're gonna have a half inch seam allowance and then if you want an inch showing, just kind of put it in a good spot. And it's being pinned in so that the seam allowance is sticking out. And I'm only pinning it to the bag front piece, not the other piece. Take it to your machine and baste this seam in place so it doesn't move as you sew. That is basted in place now. I do not want this to get caught in my seam allowance or move, so I am going to put a pin right there to keep that in place as I sew. Now we are ready to sew the pouch together. I'm gonna lay it like this, opened up, and you're gonna unzip the zipper. About three quarters of the way. Don't forget this. If you forget this, you're gonna have to unpick this and do this all over again. Take the two bag outside pieces and put them together. Take the two bag lining pieces and put them right sides together. And pin all the way around the perimeter. You're gonna leave a hole about this big on the lining pieces. And as you pin, this is very important. See how my zipper it kind of wants to do things here. You are going to want to make sure that as you pin it, your zipper kind of stays sitting right side up like that, if that makes any sense. I mean, you could go, so you could go like this, which is going to give you something wonky. So you can see if the zipper's facing that way, when I turn it right side out, I'm going to get a weird pucker. So have the zipper sitting like that, which means the seam allowance of the zipper is towards the lining. And when I do this pin, I like to pin on both sides of that zipper seam allowance. Like that, so that that really stays in place. Um, take a few minutes and pin this properly. I'm obviously being quick for a video. Pin this all the way around, stitch around the perimeter, and like I said, leave an opening on this side about this big and make sure you back stitch as you start and stop your seam. The other thing to watch out for, you're gonna want to use a half inch seam allowance, smaller, not bigger, because you do not want your sewing machine to sew over this metal. It will break the needle and it can damage your machine. So you need to make sure as you're sewing over this part that there is no metal in there. This has been sewn all around the perimeter. I have an opening here. We're ready to go ahead and turn it right side out. I like to come in with some scissors and clip the corners so you get a nicer turnout. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down to about that. Clip the additional corners. 
stick your hand in the opening that you left. This is why you had to have the zipper unzipped because if the zipper was zipped, there was no, there was no way you're turning this thing right side out. And remember, you've got a pin right here to hold that um, grommet thing in place. So I'm gonna take that out so I don't hurt myself. Okay, then take the lining, push it into the bag, just like the bag would look when it's finished. And then get that corner poked out. Make sure you really kind of push on that. And pop these corners up. That's why that seam allowance, you wanted to pay attention to where that was. And the last step is just to take it to your machine, give it a really good pressing, um, and then pull open the inside. You've got a hole here. So what I like to do is I just take this and I fold these pieces under, like so. And I pin it and I sew it. And I just, I don't hand sew it, I sew right on the top. It's in the lining, you're never gonna notice it. It doesn't bother me. But if it bothers you, you can hand sew that closed. After that's hand sewn, if you're making the Harry Potter inspired, inspired pouches, the last thing you're gonna need is a patch. This is uh, an official patch. I got, it for, I got it at Universal Studios in Florida. You can order them online. Um, it's pretty easy to find them. You're just gonna go ahead and attach the patch. Every patch is a little different, so just go ahead and follow the direct directions on the package. And when you're done, you'll end up with a fun set of Harry Potter house pouches.